Another discrete random variable distribution that we are going to be talking about is called the Poisson distribution. Uh, so it's got a few requirements as well. And the Poisson is interesting because we actually only need one piece of information uh, in order to figure out like our PMF and the expected value. Uh, we need what is called a rate of success. Okay, so let's discuss this just for a second. So a rate of success would be something like, um, let's say you have you own a fast food restaurant and per hour uh, 20 people come through your drive-through or 20 people per hour. That would be a rate of success. So when we have this rate of success, um, what we can what we can do is we can talk about like is it possible for zero people to come through your drive-thru in an hour? And the answer is absolutely. Um, probably not very likely, but it's possible that even though on average your 20 people per hour come through, it's possible that nobody comes through. Now the interesting thing about the Poisson distribution is that it's also possible to go to infinity. Like, is it possible that uh, a thousand people come through your drive-through in an hour? And the answer is yes. Now, whether or not you're actually like able to process that many people, that's a different question. But like theoretically, is it possible that a thousand people all of a sudden want to go through uh, your fast food drive-through? And the answer is yes. So what it means is that the probability table actually doesn't have an end. And so because of that, we've got to use a few tools to be able to answer some of the questions that, that we may have. Okay, so with this, some of the other rules that we need with our Poisson distribution is that our successes, number of people through the drive-through, or if a person comes through the drive-through, successes happen one at a time. Now they can be really close together, like you know, a hundredth of a second apart, but the successes have to happen one at a time. If they don't, well, we've got an issue. Um, but like for the drive-through example, you know, like the successes of the people coming through the drive-through, if that happens one at a time. Okay. You know what? Let me not use that, and I'll just write out that. Okay, the other thing is, is that successes have to be independent. Or, you know, even better than writing successes, let's say the, um, well, yeah, we'll, we'll put that up. Successes are independent. All right, so the successes are independent from one another. Okay, so let's build our probability table. Um, and let's say something smaller than 20, because it took me a long time to like get up to 20. Let's just say um, our successes happen at a rate of five an hour. All right, and let's say that uh, the variable for these successes is, it has a name, and its name is Lambda. So we've, when we have our rate of success, we've got our lambda. All right, so let's talk about, we'll do drive through. Um, yeah, so we'll write that up here. Drive through. And we'll say lambda equals five per hour. And, oh, shoot hour and we'll do this as five customers so in cleaner we should do it like five customers per hour okay so we've got our lambda let's go ahead and build our probability table so we've got X remember X represents our support and it's our all possible outcomes and is it possible that with five per hour, is it possible that nobody comes through in 
the hour that we're measuring? And the answer is yes. Is it possible that we've got one? Sure. Possible we have two? Absolutely. Three, four, five. Now, what about if we get six? Is it possible that more people show up than what typically show up? Answer is yeah. Yeah, six is a valid number. And so what we see is this just continues on and on and on. What's the probability that, is it possible that 200, 300 people show up? The answer is yeah, it's possible. But at that point, we're getting extremely unlikely. Uh, but technically, these uh, probability tables for Poisson distribution uh, extend to infinity. OK, so then you might be thinking, well, if we have this, we need to know what our PMF is, or what our probability mass function is. And Poisson, similarly to binomial, uh, has a function that we can use in order to solve it. So if we're going to use our equation, let's go back to pink, what we've got is that our probability mass function, so the probability that the random event, number of people coming to your drive through in an hour, is equal to a specific outcome, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, et cetera, is equal to, OK, so here's our equation. We've got e to the negative lambda multiplied by lambda raised to the power of x, which is the specific number of outcomes that we're interested in, divided by x factorial. And once again, we could shove our numbers in. Remember, e is a constant. It's like you know, 2 point something something. Anyhow, it's similar to pi. It's another just constant value that, that we have. Uh, you can look it up. It's on most calculators. Uh, so anyways, that's just a, that's a constant. We've got lambda, which is one variable, which is established. And x is our specific outcome, which is over here. So we've got everything that we need. We can totally ram it through and figure out all these probabilities. However, we would never be done, right? Because this probability table extends into infinity. But most of the time when we do these tables, we actually look at just the range for which the probabilities are actually substantial. So you know, where it at least has you know, something like a half a percent or something is the range where it's going to look at. And the software packages do that too, where it'll chunk out exactly where um, where the probabilities are significant. Now, if you want to look at a different range, you can tell the software to look at a different range. Um, but by default, it tries to capture where most of those probabilities are occurring. OK, so we've got all of that, which is fantastic. Uh, we're looking at uh, our PMF. And so we could go through and calculate that. If we have the PMF, we could also get the CDF. Now, up here. Uh, I'm going to just put down some, uh, some probabilities. They have nothing to do with this 5, because I'm not going to take the time to actually calculate this. But let's just suppose that our probability mass function looked something like this. Like it looked like, uh, you know, point, I don't know, we had like point 0.3, and then we had like a point 0.1, and then we had like a point 0.05, oh point Oh, five point oh two five. Okay, kind of etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's going to continue on down the list. Now, one thing that we've always said is that well, the sum of your PDF has to equal one. And now, when we sum up any specific chunk of the uh, of the PMF for a Poisson distribution, what you're going to notice is that it never actually sums up to one. And the reason is, is because, well, it extends on forever. That kind of poses a problem with some of the ways that we've thought about doing some calculations. Um, but we can utilize some of our probability, um, some of the truths about our probability in order to figure out uh, the answer. So like, let's just fill out a little bit of this CDF. So this would be 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.45, 0 0.5, and then 0. 5, 2, 5. So we're taking the CDF, remember, is the probability of a specific event and everything before it. So we've got our CDF. Okay, so let's say that I want to know 
this probability. What is the probability that our discrete random variable, or you know, the number of customers that come through in an hour, is going to be less than or equal to two? Well, this one's not too bad. Remember, this format is the same format of what the CDF actually looks like in generic terms. And so we could just go down to the number two and say that equals 0.45. Okay, that's great. What if we change this though? What if we say, what is the probability of x being greater than two? Okay, this one is problematic because one way that we've done it before is we're just said, oh, just greater than two. Great, we will add up 0.05 plus 0.025 plus this one plus this one. And we quickly realize that we've got a problem with the Poisson distribution because it goes on forever. So this greater than thing is a little bit hard. But it's actually not too bad because we can utilize the idea of complements. So I'm going to go over there and circle exactly what I want. So if I want greater than or equal to 2, I'm looking for what's the probability of ooh, greater than. Let me just erase that a little bit. Greater than 2, I'm looking for the probability of that direction, kind of circled and going down. And the thing is, is I can't directly find it. I can't just measure all of these. Well, I mean, I could try, but I'd have to go on for like infinity to get the exact answer. Or I can utilize the idea of complements, right? So I know this probability, right? I just calculated the probability of being less than or equal to 2. So if I want to know the probability of being greater than 2, which in this pink now, is just going to be equal to 1 minus the probability of being less than or equal to 2, what I just circled. Well, I already calculated that. 1 minus 0.45. And that's going to equal 0.55. Okay, now remember real quick, these numbers have nothing to do with this 5 per hour. I was just kind of using this as a scenario to show uh, how we kind of have to be smart about how we solve our probability statements since this probability table with our PMF and our CDF extends forever. Okay, so commonly remember questions that we ask a lot of times is like what is the mean what is the standard deviation what's the variance well we can find those with our probability uh, or with some of the shortcuts that we know because this equal or this distribution is in fact a Poisson distribution so let's get rid of those real quick and let's go back to our scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and erase these since we're not using that kind of fictitious scenario that I had. We'll go back to this 5. Again, for this 5 per hour. Okay, so how am I going to figure this out? Well, it's actually ridiculously easy. This is the easiest one out of them all. So Poisson, just by a odd quirk, uh, the lambda, right, which we have, the successes that, you know, these successes, sorry, hold on, I have this labeled at the wrong spot. This needs to be labeled at the rate of success. There we go, is our lambda. Okay, so lambda, it actually equals the expected value of x, which is equal to our mu. Furthermore, it also equals the variance of x, which equals sigma squared. So like lambda is ridiculously important. Like as soon as we know what lambda is, uh, we know a ton of stuff about this situation. So if lambda equals 5, then mu equals 5, and sigma squared equals 5, 
and then sigma, or just our standard deviation, equals the square root of 5. Uh, so super, super handy. Now there is one wrinkle that occurs quite often in, uh, in lambda, or with the lambda in the Poisson distribution. And the wrinkle that happens is they might give you a rate like 5 per hour, but their questions might be in a different rate. So we might be, have been given, let's say, this 5 per hour, and, but my questions are all like, what is the probability of, you know, in the next hour, or in the next two hours, that we're going to have greater than, or less than or equal to three, but we'll say over three hours. Okay, the problem is, is the rate that was given was over one hour. This rate is asking for over three hours. When this happens, what we need to do is we need to convert, we need to have a uh, equivalent proportion that has this other hourly, um, or this, this other breakdown in the denominator. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. It's not hard, it's kind of one of these fraction manipulations that we've got to remember. Okay, so if we have five per one hour, five customers, we'll put a C there, per one hour, the question is, is, well, how many customers is that per three hours? Right, so we need these two ratios to be equivalent to one another. The only thing that's different is that you know, it's got a different uh, rate, like hour time on the bottom here. Okay, well, what we can do, remember, when we have our fractions, uh, we can, if I want to get this number out of the denominator, and I can pull it over to the other side, I can multiply by three hours on both sides of the equation. So I could do three hours multiplied by five customers divided by one hour equals question mark number of customers. So if you look the units, this hour and that hour are going to go away. So now I've got three times five divided by one, which is going to give me 15 customers is equal to my question mark number of customers. So my new lambda, right, my new rate of success is going to be 15 customers per three hours. And that would be the new lambda that I use to calculate uh, all of these probabilities. So we just have to know that sometimes the rate of success that we're given is not give that is not what our problem actually is interested in. We're given a rate of success, but it's not the lambda that we want. And so we have to go through and do a conversion to get that lambda into the right format for our problem. And once we have it into the right format, then we can use you know, our equations, we can use our definitions, and we can answer our questions with respect to our Poisson distribution.